Ahoy my friends, Ryder here and welcome back to another Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis video. Today I'm going to be doing my first ever tier list for all the characters in Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis. Uh, so if you're a day one player, a free to play player, minnow, whale, dolphin, whatever, I'm going to be going through exactly what I think is going to put each character in a category ranking from S, A, B, C, and D. I'm going to be overviewing their costumes and their weapons, how many Arcanum costumes they have, uh, the viability that they have, the choices they have in weaponry, etc. If you're a new player, this might be able to help you choose which characters you want to focus on in the future. Uh, because Ever Crisis kind of has a trend when it comes to characters in this game. Certain characters get more love than others. Hopefully that changes since my uh, letter to Applebot that I did recently. But that being said, I'm going to get into this tier list and uh, we'll see where it goes. Alright guys, so I'm going to be using this program right here at tiermaker.com. As you guys can see, I have all the characters down here below. And I'm just going to start going through them one at a time, I guess in the order that they are just here. So why don't we start with Lucia? I think as we go through these and I check on their weapons and costumes, I might be moving around characters here and there. In order to figure out how we're going to do this, I am going to go to final ff7.dev, which is a fantastic website for looking at all of the characters' individual weapons. So as you can see here, if I go to cloud, it shows all of the individual weapons. Um, for every single character along with all of their costumes. It is a fantastic website and I really appreciate the people who have put this up. All right, so that being said, let's go over and we'll start with Lucia. All right, so we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, six costumes. Now, if we jump over to Aerith, who I'm guessing has the most costumes out of anyone, she has nine. All right, let's see Sephiroth, he's at seven. Cloud is at eight. All right, so Lucia sitting at six is not bad. Now let's see what this costume is right here. This is just her regular costume. Um, all right, so let's go back here. Now, Lucia has one single Arcanum costume. However, she's the only character in the whole game to have an Arcanum set for Earth. So I think that's gonna give her a little bit of extra marks there. She also has the Marks Queen set, which it looks like it gives a uh, magic attack up plus eight let's see what this is oh i guess this one's undefined so i guess it's not fully fleshed out yet but it looks like this gives some type of magic attack up plus eight and magic or regular physical defense up plus eight whereas this would be magic defense up plus eight attack physical attack plus eight all right we also have the new gothic bunny costume which is buff debuff duration plus 10 and then it looks like uh i think this is the symbol for fire slash ice mastery on there along with the resistance so but other than that lucia doesn't really have too much viability i mean she does have the buff debuff extension costume which is great she does have the earth arcanum costume which is great the vv's garb was a free costume from final fantasy 9 but based on this if we go back to this i'm gonna put lucia up in let's say C for now. And then we're gonna go over, let's check out her weapons and see if we can bump her up a little bit. All right, so this is Lucia over here. She does have, it looks like 16 different weapons. We have the Rose Musket, um, which is one of her new weapons right here. Let's see if we can check it out. All right, sweet. This is actually a super sick website. The reinforcement R abilities are boost magic ability potency, boost fire potency. Um, this is a fantastic website, I'm not going to lie. It boosts fire uh, buff or debuff effect right here, but it doesn't quite show the actual effects. That's a bit of a shame. All right. Also, it doesn't go back to where you were. But other than that, I'm really liking this so far. She does have the Bald Eagle, which is a very good Ice Imperil weapon. Other than that, only Yuffie has an Ice Imperil weapon. She has a bunch of good event weapons, which are solid. Uh, she does have a, let's see here, I believe the Mad Minute or the Black Rifle is a pretty good non-elemental DPS weapon. But other than her new Rose Musket and her, where is it right here, the Holiday Revolver, she doesn't really have 
anything other than the bald eagle so she has a single imperil she has one arcanum weapon slash costume but other than that she doesn't have anything that's really standing out here so i think i'm gonna leave her down in c for now all right now let's go over let's look at matt and we'll start with his weapon since we're already on weapons matt is a character that definitely has more going for him i would say he does have prime number which is a solid healing weapon he does have the centipede which is an aoe physical defense up weapon along with a heal which is absolutely fantastic he has absolute royal which is really good for uh, a sub weapon for ice he has core defender which raises the aoe magic defense for the team always good he has the killer hornet um, which can break diamond sigils and also has really good uh, reinforcement abilities being physical attack and physical ability potency. So right off the bat, I'm thinking that Matt is definitely going to be a step up above Lucia, even though he only has four costumes here. So the intellectual PO soldier has, it looks like magic defense plus four. And well, I don't know what this one is. Is that accuracy? No, there can't be accuracy. Crit potency. All right, that's good to know. All right, so we'll go back to Matt here and let's see all right this one has i'm not sure what that is right there that icon ah healing this one has boost healing and physical defense so he does have a heal one although i don't think he has anything with hp on it as of right now all right then we have the killer attire oh this one has hp so killer attire is going to have hp and physical attack and then the professor is going to have magic attack up and magic defense up eight so even though he only has four costumes i'm still going to slide in matt at a b right now he is missing both an arcanum weapon and costume so he can't really pull through um really strong in the non-elemental dps area or the elemental dps area but his um amount of support capacity that he has along with healing is going to definitely bump him up a tier all right let's go back who's next on the list all right so now we have sephiroth all right sephiroth's gonna be up there let's be real all right so sephiroth has nameless a two atb cost weapon that's great for breaking diamond sigils he has edged wings ice arcanum weapon he has the glare reed which is a aoe physical attack based weapon aonibi which can raise his magic attack up and give him regan he has the northern lights which i believe is some type of debuff weapon yes it is i don't use it very often let's go back here we have the prototype crimson blade a great uh sub weapon for boosting fire potency a, the aoe thunder sword we have the non-elemental dps sword oh no that's this one right here then he has the torn wing for single target physical defense up dark heavens so he has a strong wind weapon along with a wind mastery costume he has the kuja spirit blade which let's be real this is the best physical magic breaking uh weapon in the game he does have a fire imperil actually he has two now that he has the flame dragon blade from the ifrit and bahamut fight along with ashura and the protector's blade which is the strongest aoe magic weapon in the game along with having uh a let's see here lethal style which gives the uh magic attack mastery right here so let's go over to the r abilities right here it does give the magic ability mastery which is essentially the arcanum for magic non-elemental dps so pretty damn powerful across the board with sephiroth here he does only have seven costumes he does have one arcanum and he does have the wind mastery along with the kuja's attire which is a really good weapon for if you let's say you're missing the arcanum for uh ice but you did have edged wings the kuja's attire would be great to put on he does have the celebratory garb so he does have two elemental mastery uh costumes so honestly sephiroth is looking pretty damn solid right now i think i'm gonna drop him into a for now and then we'll see where to go from there all right so moving on to glenn so let's go over and check out glenn's weapons right here he does have quite a bunch of them um, i'm not too familiar with most of these because i don't use glenn hardcore squad is essentially like the mithril rod is an aoe physical defense magic defense up weapon so it is pretty good thousand waves is a great sub weapon pumpkin lamp post is a, essentially the physical version of the aonibi so it raises physical attack then he has the stream slasher so he does have his first arcanum set being the limit break draw one which is really good 
Um, he does have Steiner's Blade. Ultimatic is a fairly good, or I would say really good, non-elemental DPS weapon for physical. Um, but he does not have any heals. He does have the AoE buffing up. He does have a few debuff weapons in here, here and there. Um, now, if we go over and we look at his costumes here, he does have five. He has the Pumpkin Nightmare, which raises physical attack and HP. Um, what else does he have here? He also has the Doom Dodger, HP and physical defense, Cake Breaker, magic attack, magic defense. Then he has Vanguard style. So he does have one Arcanum set, and it is the Limit Break draw set, which is pretty good. But other than that, he is kind of lacking in other areas. So I think I will take Glenn and put him in B. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking that Lucia should be bumped up, but she does not have the... I mean, I might bump her up here in a little bit, but as of right now, I use Lucia less and less. I find that Yuffie takes up where you would often need her with the Ice in Peril. And other than the Ice in Peril, which is normally when I was using her, she is kind of lacking a little bit here and there. I do like her new Gothic Bunny outfit, um, but I think she's going to need a little bit more to bump up in the rankings. Now, who's next here? Here we have Zack. All right, Zack, one of my favorite Final Fantasy characters. All right, so Zack does have a lot of swords here. He does have the Stream Guard Fire Arcanum set from the Limit Break draw. He has a very strong non-elemental DPS weapon in the Ceremonial Sword, although it does have a 5 ATB cost. He has the only Water Imperil weapon in the game, and it also breaks physical defense. He has the Twinkling Star, which breaks magic attack and lowers physical defense. Um, he now has the Ifrit Sword, the Carrot Sword, the Arc Sword, which breaks magic defense. He has the Crystal Sword for an AoE fire attack, a wind attacking weapon right here, the Zwilehander, Enhanced Sword for a single target heal. Other than that, he's looking pretty good. I like Zack's kit overall. I do think he needs like a uh, like one of those really hard hitting non-elemental weapons other than the Ceremonial Sword, something with a slightly faster cast time. But let's go over and look at his costumes right here and see where he's at. All right, so he does have the buff debuff extension costume. He does have the fire Arcanum set costume right here. The Black Hound with HP and physical attack. The Valiant suit right here with magic attack and physical defense. He has his soldier first class uniform, um, soldier second class uniform. I didn't even know that he had this one right here. Oh, I guess one of these is the one that you get from the gear exchange and one is the one you get from the beginning. I thought this was the gear exchange one. I didn't realize he had two of these. Um, he does have the beach costume right here with HP and magic defense, I believe. Yeah, magic defense. And then the holiday suit right here, which is a really good one right here. It's for, um, it looks like it gives HP and I don't think this is a mastery, um, but it does give physical ability potency up right there for Zach. All right, now if we go back here and we compare him, he does have uh, the only water and peril weapon in the game. But still, he only has one Arcanum set, just like Glenn. He has more viability than Glenn, but is he as good as Sephiroth? I don't think so, but I think I'm going to put him right here. Hmm, it's hard to say. I think I'm going to put him one step ahead of Matt right here. All right, let's see here. All right, so we'll put them like that. So whoever's at the top of the list is going to be the strongest in that category. Zack could also be a low end of A or a very strong end of B, I would say. All right, now let's go back. Let's see who else. All right, on to Red 13. Okay, so let's see here. Go into Red 13. We'll check out his costumes. He does have the Hojo Specimen. These ones only give plus four. The Rubber Harness, which is healing plus eight, physical defense plus eight. The Canyon Duds, which is HP plus 10. And it looks like, I'm not actually sure what that is right there. Hopefully it's there. All right, so I'm not really sure what that is for the Canyon Duds, if you guys could fill me in. It looks like some type of physical ability potency or something like that, but I know that it's not that. I know it's something different. I feel like this was just the debuff costume. I think this is the one that only adds to, instead of buff debuff duration, I think this is only debuff duration that it gives, something like that. Then we have the Seaside Aloha, HP plus 10, Physical Attack plus 10, and lastly the Hellhound, HP plus 10, and the Fire Ice Mastery costume. So nothing really crazy here in his costumes. As we all know, Red 13 and Barret get the least amount of love. But if we go over to his weapons, let's check this out. 
The Hellhouse Caller is a great sub weapon, um, but I don't think we can really place him based off his event weapons here. He does have the Flame Dragon's Band, which is a fire imperil. He also has the Seaside Caller, which is a great thunder imperil weapon. So two imperil weapons. He has a solid Regan heal in Platinum Caller. Rage Caller is a decent fire weapon, but I believe its primary stat is magic attack, even though it's a physical weapon, which is a little bit weird. Um, where is the magic? He does have the Canyon Caller, which is an AoE wind attack that also breaks magic defense. He also has, I don't know, remember which caller it is that boosts magic defense up. Um, it's one of these. Uh, so yeah, so one of these, he has an AOE magic defense up weapon, kind of like Cloud's uh, bandage sword, which is pretty solid. Um, but to be honest, I feel like Red 13 is pretty lacking in a lot of areas. So it's hard to really give him a good score. So I'm going to put him up here actually behind Lucia. She's on the upper end of C. Um, that neither of them, well, actually, she even has an Arcanum costume. So I'm actually going to put her up here because she has the only Earth Arcanum costume in the game, which I think is pretty noteworthy. Red 13 has a Fire Ice Mastery, the magic defense up, but nothing that no other characters don't already have. All right, now let's go on to Yuffie. All right, so we'll check out her costumes first. All right, so Yuffie only has four costumes. She is a relatively new character. She does have the first buff debuff extension costume. She has a wind arcanum costume. And she also has the puckish line from the gear voucher. Physical attack plus eight, magic defense plus eight. All right, now if we look at her weapons, however, that's really where Yuffie is going to shine. She has multiple imperil weapons, including the fire imperil boomerang, the ice imperil pinwheel. She also has one more, I can't remember where it is. Ah, uh, the Thunder Imperil Wind Slash. So in terms of like debuffing Imperils, if you want them all on one character, Yuffie is basically your girl. She just needs a water one at this point and an earth one. And then what, whatever that last element is that I'm forgetting. She also has the Arctic Scar Star, which boosts physical attack for a teammate and herself. I really like this weapon. She has the Wind Arcanum Diner Tray. Um, she has the four point shuriken, which lowers physical defense, I believe, in an AoE. Spiral shuriken, which gives her an ice attack. All in all, I think that Yuffie is pretty durable and viable in the game. So if we go back here, Yuffie, I think I'm going to put her. She has a single Arcanum uh, sword. I think I'm going to put her up here just above Zack. Although I feel like her and Zack are pretty much tied right now. So honestly, a lot of like kind of mid-tier characters right here, although Yuffie is pretty good with the Wind Arcanum, I might be a little bit harsh on the grading guys, but I'm just seeing it as I see it, all right? It's my job to give you guys my honest opinion. I've been playing this game since day one. I've played it every single day. I've made guides for all the hard content in this game, as you guys know. So I'm just going to do this as best as I can. All right. Aerith is next. All right, now let's go over to Aerith. Aerith is probably the most loved character in this whole game. She gets a ton of stuff. So she has a wind arcanum weapon. She also has a new fire arcanum weapon that just came out. She has the Garnut's Rod, which raises magic attack for another ally, along with granting Regan. She has the Snowflake with the Cure All in the third Materia slot, which gives her an ice attack with a magic defense down, I believe. Uh, the Chocobo Staff, amazing event weapon. The Floral Wand, she has a uh, Wind Imperil. She has the Sun Umbrella for breaking physical defense, magic defense. This is a fantastic weapon. I've used it so many times. Fairy Tail, AoE healing. Mithril Rod for the physical defense, magic defense up. She has the Guard Stick, which is the best uh, R ability for healing stat in the game. Honestly, she's really, really, really good. Um, but I'm not seeing anything crazy here. I still think Aerith is, pr like, I would say the best, I don't know about the best healer now that Matt has his new Centipede. Uh, but she's definitely pretty damn good. So if I go back here to this, well, actually, let's go check out her costumes before we do that. All right, so Aerith has the Wind Arcanum costume, the Rosy Battle Suit with healing magic defense up eight. She has the Sunny Robe uh, for HP plus 10 and magic attack. Garnet's gown, 
which is a probably the best healing costume in the entire game. It gives HP plus 10 and healing plus 10. Chocobo suit, HP plus 8. Magic defense plus 8. Berry of Snowfall. So she has HP plus 10 here. And I can't quite recall what that one is right there. That's a bummer that they don't have all of these filled in. Um, I don't think it's a Ice Arcanum for her. I think it's something different, but I can't quite remember. Then we have the Floral Gown, which is her buff debuff extension costume, along with the Classic Coney, which is her new Fire Arcanum set. All right, so let's go back over here. Okay, for placing Aerith, I don't know, guys. She's looking pretty damn solid. I'm going to put her up here right ahead of Sephiroth as of right now. Honestly, it's kind of hard. I feel like I want to bump her to S tier. But yeah, I think I'm going to put her in S tier for right now. We'll come back and we'll check on that. All right. Next up, we have Tifa. All right. So Tifa has six costumes. She does have a healing costume, HP plus 10, healing plus 10. So just as good as Garnet's uh, costume. She has a ice arcanum set with the fairy of the holy flame she has the physical set here with amaranth which is super solid and the guide uniform for the non-physical uh mastery on it as well now if we go to her weapons let's see what she's got to offer she has the leather glove so she can break magic attack and physical attack she has a non-elemental dps and stonic striker then she has the Amaranth's Claws, which boosts, greatly boosts HP and uh, physical attack. Plus, by casting it, you can get your physical attack boost up to high tier instantly. Then she has the Guide Gloves on top of that, which is essentially just as good as Zidane's Sword. Plus the Mastery from the non-physical DPS in the costume. Then we have a 4 ATB cast heal right here. Absolutely insane. All in all, Tifa's looking really good. She has the Crystal Gloves, which has a fantastic HPR ability stat. The Motor Drive for doing wind damage. All in all, she's looking really, really good. I know the Power Soul is also really good for the R abilities right here. So I'm going to go back over into this list, and I'm going to pop uh, Tifa up here into S. Um, let me grab her. And I think I'm actually going to put her ahead of Aerith for right now, guys. I know that Aerith has way more costumes. Actually, I don't think I can put her ahead of Aerith. She's definitely on par, though, guys, for real. She is really, really, really good. She, With what she does, she's fantastic. All right, let's go back here. Now, who do we have left? We have Barret and then Cloud. All right, so for Barret, let's look at Barret. Barret is one of those characters that I think has had the least love in the game. Um, as you can see here, he only has 14 weapons. Um, he does have the Micro Laser, which has the AoE heal in the third slot. But the Magic Attack up, I wish this was Magic Attack slash Physical Attack up. That would have made it a lot more viable. Uh, he does have the Heavy Hauser, which is a great weapon overall. Non-elemental DPS based, great R abilities. Solid Bazooka for breaking Magic Attack. He has the Assault Gun for the AoE Physical Defense. He has the W Machine right here, which I believe... Oh, I wish it really showed these. That's a bummer that it doesn't. All right, so let's go back. Um, Flame Projector, which is a great Magic Attack, uh, R Ability, Fire Potency weapon. He has the Hell House Cannon, Siege Cannon. But other than that doesn't have much i mean a w machine can break physical defense if i remember correctly but to be honest now he did have a niche with the assault gun until matt came out but now that matt came out and his can heal on top of it he really got kind of bumped down so i'm actually going to put barrett down here behind red 13 unfortunately um let's just go back and check his costumes really quick I wish they did give Barrett more love. So he has the least amount of costumes in the whole game. He has his Avalanche Leader starting one, the Fiery Cape, which this one looks absolutely amazing. HP plus 8, Physical Defense plus 8. And then he has the Scrap Armor, uh, which looks like Magic Attack plus 10, Physical Attack plus 10, something like that. I can't exactly remember what that stat is. Oh, it's Boost Attack. That's right. It's not just Magic Attack. So that's just regular attack right there. So excuse me for my mistake on all the previous... Uh, things that I looked at, but I don't think that it changes my um, evaluation thus far. So yeah, Barrett only having three costumes is pretty brutal, especially in comparison to, to Red, who at least has five. But at least he does, at least Barrett does have a, a defensive 
based one and an offensive base one. So he can ha you can use him here and there depending on what you have. All right, guys. Last but not least, we have Cloud Strife. All right, so Cloud has eight costumes. He has a Water Mastery costume, a Ice Arcanum from the Limit Break Draw costume, the Physical Zidane costume right here with HP and Physical Ability Mastery. I don't think it's the actual Arcanum costume, but it, it does raise the Physical Ability Potency right there. Um, we have the Thunder Arcanum costume, the Fire Arcanum costume, the Bandage Coat, which grants healing and HP, which is just as good as Garnet's uh, Robe or Tifa's Lifeguard costume. So, I mean, Cloud is looking pretty damn solid, guys. I think Cloud is probably one of the most well-rounded characters in the game. He has essentially almost everything you need. Physical defense down. He has an AoE heal weapon. Um, he has the water weapon right here, the thunder weapon, the non-elemental weapon. He has the butterfly edge for the limit break and the high HP. Magic defense up AoE to the team. Fire in peril. Non-elemental defense. Uh, damage weapon one of the strongest in the game he has the stream saber now which is the ice arcanum i mean cloud really is the character that has it all but are we surprised guys it is cloud strife here at the end of the day all right so it looks like this is where we are in the uh tier list as of right now so it does look like cloud is in first place then Aerith, then tifa Followed by Sephiroth, although I do think that Sephiroth, because of his niche ability with the AoE, so he does have, because of Akuja's Spirit Blade and because of the Protector's Blade being the only AoE weapons in the game, I am going to bump him up here. Then I'm going to move Yuffie up to A, Zack up to A, and I think I'm also going to move up Matt to A, because I do think these characters are pretty good. And I think that this is where I'm more or less going to leave off. Um, the only reason that Glenn is jumping ahead of Lucia right here is because of his new Limit Break draw weapon. Those are really, really, really strong, guys. So if he didn't have that, if it was just a regular Water Arcanum, I would be putting him behind Lucia. And then we have Red 13 down here as C and Barrett over here as C. I know some people might be thinking that Barrett would be down in D, but I don't think so. I just used Barrett in a team to beat the Ifrit and Bahamut EX2 fight. So I do think that he does have viability in the game. You just have to find out where to use him. Other than that, guys, this is more or less how I see everything in uh, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis right now. I'm going to pop back over to the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. I haven't done it before. If you guys have any uh, pointers or things that you guys think I could look out for in the future, definitely let me know. That being said, if you guys are a new player looking for a community, um, why don't you guys come join our Discord? It's called the Curseborn Discord. Uh, there is a link to join in the description of every video that I make. We have a whole bunch of players in there from day one free to play to SEA free to play, from minnows to dolphins to whales to even krakens. We have a co-op community for people that are trying to finish quests. If you guys need help, you can ask all kinds of questions. But yeah, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did enjoy it and you did find it useful, don't forget to drop a like on the video. And if you're keen on future content, don't forget to sub to the channel. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.